I'd like to welcome everyone to the Emanuel Council meeting. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For the record, uh, Madam Mayor Gilbert will not be here this evening. And uh, uh, Councilman Balliot is by virtual uh, meeting. So at this time, we'll have. Personal appeals part one. If anyone has a personal appeal, uh, state your name, where you're from, and you have five minutes for your appeal. Sorry, I believe the gentleman uh, in the name in the back I will make speak. What? That, that would be you. Sir. You're up. Sir. Yeah. I'm very hard of hearing. What do you say? Do, do, you uh, have, do you have anything you want to address council with? Yeah. Um, Just state your name and your address. Peter, that's uh, 34 West Greenleaf Street. What was uh -huh. your first name again, sir? Peter. Peter. Pardon? Peter. Peter Metz. Metz. M E T C. Thank you. Sure. Um, so I, I had asked the request about uh, two months ago about the uh, water dam for the park. And I wanted to see if you considered it because of the hazard of losing the pool for the summer. Uh, yeah, so our public works department looked at it. They referred it on to the engineer. You know, their concern is simply uh, investing in something like that. Will it actually hold up or not? So the engineer, the engineer is the person that's going to make a determination for it's it. It's going to hold up. So we said, yeah, yeah. Wow. Wow. But it, but according to I, what I read, it's used by the military, so it holds up. Yeah. Now that's just my you know interpretation of it. Right. Well, again, that's. So the engineer is smarter than I am when it comes to that stuff. Okay, well, uh, <laughs> you have another uh, suggestion how to stop that from flooding into Well, not, the not yet, no, not yet. So that's why the engineer is gonna take a look at it. It's a good idea. It's a, it's a real good idea. Okay. Uh, what about paving? Uh, anything, okay, let me ask you this. The state, have you contacted the state about the main street lately? I mean, like within the last month? So I would say the answer is no. We do know the paving schedule is not till 2025, but that doesn't mean they can't do some patching or well, fill in the bad patching. spots. Just tear up the whole from 6th Street to 4th Street, that right side. You know, if you could just take that off and put new, new pavement in there because like right in front of the gun shop, the pizza parlor, you know, there's a ditch, like 10 feet wide. And then at the intersections, it just keeps getting worse and worse. And it doesn't seem like there's any common sense applied to the borough when it comes to fixing intersections. So just those things, if you can fix intersections and make possibly work on 6th Street, and how horrible is uh, 7th Street? I mean, it's like, so if you just do some little things, show the community some action on that, because we're all talking about it on Facebook. That's all I have to say. Uh, I hope that something gets done with that, because it's been years and years. In years and years, is something going to be done? Thank you, Mr. Betts. We yeah, have absolutely. we're putting a, a program in. We actually have a company from Texas coming to scan all the borough streets to prioritize which ones we should address first, and then uh, we set up a separate uh, uh, an account specifically for roads because we know we're way behind on that. Okay, may I ask how much is that going to cost? But we don't know yet because we're just. You're talking about the scan? Yeah. $25,000. $25,000. Which, by the way, if you repave roads with $25,000, it gives you less than one block of paving. But well, what about the borough employees? Can't you just borrow? No, some that's, that's with our borough employees yeah, like, doing it. That's, just, that's the cost of the pavement. What about equipment? Can you, I mean, work together with other boroughs and use some of their equipment? We do. 
That's the cost for material, sir. Twenty-five thousand to pay the block. With okay, material. well, I'm just telling you what the citizens are talking about. We appreciate We've already it. seen it. That's all I have to say. Thank kindly. you. Okay. Thank you. Anything yes, else, sir? That's it. At this time, uh, Sarah, if you want to unmute our virtual guests and see if we have any virtual public appeals. If you have a virtual appeal, just state your name and where you're from and what your appeal is, and now would be the time to do it. Wow. All right, hearing none. Sarah, you can remute them. Uh, community minute, does anybody have anything to bring forward? <clears throat> so, um, Emmaus High School softball season has begun. Uh, I'll be here at Kiwanis Park uh, here in the borough. If you're a softball fan, come out, check out their schedule, and uh, they're a good team this year. So, uh, see how they do. All the spring sports start right, yeah. not just softball. Oh, well, softball's played. Yeah. But <laughs> they are ranked second in the Valley, and the boys are ranked number one for baseball. So, it's, we're going to have some good teams. Boys don't play here. So. No, they don't. They play in lower back. <laughs> uh, anyone else? Community minute? All right. This time we'll have spe special presentations. Uh, we have Wes Barrett with regard to flashing pedestrian crossing crossing sign. Want me to come up further? Or where do you want me to? Yep. Well, all right. Let's come on up. Yeah, you can go on the end of the table there. That's fine. All right. So I'd like to present from the Emmaus 5K a check to the borough of Emmaus for eight thousand five hundred dollars. Uh, to install the flashing cross signals. Um, camera's over there if you want to show the camera. Where is the camera here? Yes, there we go. We've got our, our beautiful uh, check there. And there we go. And I'm getting chat up there uh, with, with a, a thumbs up. Um, but I just a, a few quick words on it. I mean, one, it's we're so grateful that the race just has continued to go. This is the 15th annual. Well, last year was the 15th annual. This year will be the 16th annual. Uh, it's raised over $150,000. Um, I mean, when we started, there were a few members, well, actually, it might just be looking at you, Brent, uh, <laughs> that were, were on there uh, for three years ago. And, you might have run the first eight or so. Yeah, at least, at least. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it's grown, grown substantially. I think we started with 176 runners. It kind of came together very last minute. I mean, it started in late September to try and pull it together. Um, we were happy with the few thousand dollars that it raised, but um, it's continually gone in a very positive direction, like I said, over, over $150,000, $45,000 of that have gone to the Halloween parade. Uh, we purchased a speed timing board for the police department. Uh, it's, it's, uh, we've given donations to the summer concert series multiple times, uh, the Emmaus Flag Day Associ Association, along with other Emmaus organizations. And then just a quick thank you. Uh, the first one is to Chris Schmidt uh, who, from the Keystone Running Store. Um, Chris has been of the fifth of those 15 years, Chris has been 100% uh, a supporter of the race. And I mean, I, I put an estimate here of over $15,000. I think it's actually more than that in just the prizes that he's given out. Uh, but also, I mean, he lends his staff uh, on for race pickup. He has his entire staff there to help out. Uh, he brings in extra people on race day uh, in the evening. I mean, he brings, brings more people out as well. So Chris has been uh, just such a, a wonderful person uh, to have around. Uh, and just in, anyone that knows the running community knows that Chris is the guy to uh, to go to for those those types of things. Um, and then I never like personal plugs, but I'm going to give that personal plug is to Wesley Works Entertainment and Wesley Works Real Estate. Um, equally, this goes really more to to my staff uh, in that I mean, yes, I get to be the guy out there on the microphone uh, waving everyone and cheering everyone on in my tux. Yes, uh, <laughs> but really, my staff does so much to support that race behind the scenes. I mean, the hours that they help me with either it's helping getting stuff uploaded to the website, designing flyers or whatever that might be. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I put that at about an, an estimated donation of about $15,000 that we've made over those, those last 15 years. And then um, the two main banks that have supported this, the uh, First Commonwealth Federal Credit Union uh, in the last few years has been a, a major supporter, but then the kind of evolution of KNBT, BBNT, Truist Bank also was a, a huge supporter in those the first few years that um, we got started. So last but not, last but not least, uh, Kathy Minster from the parade committee, and then also all the 
uh, borough staff and um, employees that help make race day possible. Uh, it's a huge operation for, obviously we up here, but the public doesn't necessarily get to see all that goes into that, the, just the number of employees that are involved. Every police officer's out there, the number of fire police, the number of firefighters, all, all of that um, really goes a, goes a long way, the EMS. So thank you. Well, Wes, from Borough Council and the Borough itself, thank you very much. As a former council member, you know how much we value this because money is hard to come by. Yeah. And, and you always consider, uh, you know, the recre recre um, recreation committee, it's yeah. now combined, but, right. but you always help support that along with the parade. I believe uh, uh, some of the parks, you contributed money towards parks. Yeah. Uh, extremely, extremely thankful for uh, your contributions over the years. And also, don't forget, I mean, the money part's nice, but the entertainment part of it is just another draw for the per for the borough with the parade and, and people that know about it, they love watching it and watching all the costumes and the runners. It's just a fun thing to see. Yeah, I mean, genuinely the evolution of that, you know, I mean, the first time, like all new things, it's, it was a little bit of a shock to the system, but then quickly, oh no, this is nice. We're already sitting out on our porch, especially on a nice day. It gave something else to do as you wait for the parade to happen. Uh, I mean, I find the costumes to be pretty hilarious <laughs> some years. Brent, you've had a few of them. I want one, <laughs> that's my right. family. That's right, that's right. Uh, so yeah, no, it's, it's just a good good event and uh, we're looking forward to 2022 being another successful year. So thank you. Well, thank you very thank much. You. Yes. Anyone else have a comment? No? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. That leads us to the reading of the minutes. We have March 21st, 2022. Does somebody want to make a motion to approve the minutes? Councilman Hart, second by Councilman Frank. Any corrections or additions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? There's seven eyes. We have no decisions on bid. Does anybody have a communication to bring forward? Hearing none, there's no borough engineer's report, solicitor's report. No report. No, no report. I finished business part one. We have two ordinances. We had uh, the first reading for both of them, March 21st at our last meeting. This will be the second reading. And we have ordinance 1225 and ordinance amending part one, street excavations, chapter 21, subsection 111 of the codified ordinances amending sections related to resurfacing requirements of street openings. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve ordinance 1225? Councilman Anders, seconded by Councilwoman Baumgartner. Any discussion? Uh, I brought all my, issue, my questions uh, last meeting, so I have none. It's a roll call vote. Uh, Councilman Ballier. Aye. Councilman Hart. Aye. Councilman Dufresne. Aye. Councilman Labor. Aye. Councilman Anders. Aye. Councilwoman Baumgartner. Aye. Councilwoman McManaman. Aye. There are seven ayes. We also have ordinance 1226 and ordinance amending part four, chapter 15, subsection 403, and chapter 15, subsection 601 of the codified ordinances. Establishing parking <coughs> restrictions on the public street and parking lot adjacent to the Emmaus Police Department. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve Ordinance 1226? Councilman Hart, seconded by Councilman Dufresne. Any discussion or questions? Uh, this is also a roll call vote. Councilwoman McManaman? Aye. Councilwoman Baumgartner? Aye. Councilman Anders? Aye. Councilman Lambert? Aye. Councilman Dufresne? Aye. Councilman Hart? Aye. Councilman Bally? Aye. There are seven ayes. Under new <laughs> business, we have a new ordinance, Ordinance 1227 for its first reading. Uh, it's an ordinance amending the provisions of Chapter 5, Part 6 of the Borough's Codified Ordinances, the provision, provisions of the International Property Maintenance Code, Subsection 5-602 Amendments. Does somebody like to make a motion to approve Ordinance 1227? Councilman Dufresne, seconded by Councilwoman McManaman. Uh, can we just get a brief overview from this? Uh, whose committee did it come from? Uh, it came from Health Sanitation Codes. Uh, Chad, do you want me to, Mr. Bally, do you want me to give a brief on this? Sure. <clears throat> so essentially all this is doing is codifying um, some inconsistencies between the boroughs, uh, 
property maintenance order uh, ordinance and that of the International Property Maintenance Code, which we typically follow. So uh, essentially, we're not really changing much. We are just uh, formally adopting the section. So, so it's just updating the borough ordinance yes. then to follow along with Yes. OK, gotcha. All right. Anybody else? Questions? This is also a roll, roll call vote. And like I said, it's first reading. Councilwoman uh, McManaman? Aye. Councilwoman Baumgartner? Aye. Councilman Anders? Aye. Councilman Laberg? Aye. Councilman Dufresne? Aye. Councilman Ward? Aye. Councilman Valiot? Aye. There are seven ayes. And second re reading will be first meeting in uh, May. First meeting. First meeting. We have no unfinished business part two. Does anybody have anything to bring forward that is not on the agenda? Does anybody have a report from Madam Mayor? All right, hearing none. We move to committee reports, Public Works Committee. Chairman Anders. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, you covered the ordinance already. Um, other than that, I have nothing for official action. Our next meeting is Wednesday, April 20th at 4 p.m. We will zoom in our report progress. All right, just a side note, we have a uh, fire union nego contract negotiating meeting at 445. So we're going to have to be brief. Right? Isn't it the 20th or meeting? Uh, I think so. No. Uh, no. Okay. What's that? Yes, I won't be able to do it. Firefighters 13th. Yes, 13th. Okay, I thought we we scheduled both of them, but not no, I, think, I think what we did was we said the 13th and then after 13th we'll decide okay. after that. Cool. All right, so you can go as long as you want now. You can. <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> All right, where's that progress? That was progress, sir. Health Sanitation and Codes Committee, Chairman Bowie. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we have nothing for official action as uh, our action item was already taken care of uh, under under new business. Our next meeting is April 27th. Uh, with that, I'll report progress. Thank you. Parks and Recreation Commission, Chairwoman Baumgartner. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, we have no items for action. Our next meeting is tomorrow, April 5th at 4.45 p.m. via Zoom. Report progress. Thank you. Public Safety Committee, Chairman Hart. Thank you, Mr. President. The first order of business is to have council consider purchase of a flashing crosswalk signal at the Harrison Street by Lincoln School. The need for this was precipitated by a change in parent pickup to Harrison Street of the kids. And those of you who run along that uh, street at the time of uh, uh, so discharge from uh, uh, from the school, uh, the uh, kids come out and they get in the parents car there. There's been a lot of near misses there. And uh, after two discussions at two separate meetings uh, of uh, public safety, uh, we recommend to this body a purchase of a, of, a, uh, of a flashing light. Can you place that in the form of a motion? I will put that in the form of a motion. And do we already have a designated spot or is that going to be worked out yet? Uh, we were letting it up to, uh, to the police department and the okay. public works to determine that. Thank you. I so, do not believe we have to deal with pen dollars. Okay. That's that's going to make well, that's it not, much. That's not a state road. Must, yeah, much less. Cool. So, uh, there's a motion by Councilman Hart. Is there a second? Councilman Dufresne? Any questions or discussion? I was just curious to know if there's any communication with the elementary school about the safety issue. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, and and they uh, quite frankly weren't very receptive to you know uh, moving it back to in front of the, the school. Uh, as far as they're concerned, this is safe safer for the children as a result of the school buses picking up out front of, of the school, and it removes the parents from the front of the school. That's but yes, and we also tried to. Convince them to pay for half of it. That, that they, those discussions they go very far. And, and do they have a um, crosswalk and the first station there? The cross for crossing guard. That's that's a borough decision, and, and we do have we do have crossing guards in that area. 
Thank you. I was just gonna ask when did they start to get I mean my kids have been having quite some time. This year. Just yeah. this year. Yeah, yeah. Good question. It is this year. And I just noticed it. I, I was gonna say I hadn't seen it or heard it, but I haven't driven it both times. Okay. Thank you. Sure. So since I'm not on the, the committee, uh, I'm just curious. From what I understand, they come out the alley and then they line up along Harrison Street for pickup. I'm just curious, where are the near misses happening? Because if they're crossing at the four-way stop sign and crossing at Second Street, where are the near misses happening? I don't know. Because if they're crossing at the intersection, there's crossing guards. I don't know where you're going to yeah. I would. I don't know where near misses happen. There is not always a crossing guard on Second Street. That's one that sometimes has one, sometimes doesn't. Third Street always has one. There's a lot of cars there and a lot of kids walking there. So all it takes is one kid to cross between two parked cars on Harrison Street. Like, I don't know where near misses myself. Though. Our, our our committee did spend a lot of time talking about Harrison Street in general, as far as being a, a throughway for fast driving. And we agree that we would look into the safe streets alternatives uh, for, uh, which was brought up by another borough resident with regard to their cars being hit as a result of their parking on Harrison Street. So you know, the ultimate resolution is to, to uh, uh, take a safe streets approach to it and with butted out curbs that uh, now is down the throughway and has a result of slowing cars down. But that's not going to help us in the near term. In the near term, we have the cars parked in there. I want some kind of signal to get people to slow down. I would assume the issue is more of them going west with the speeding because they're coming up the hill to the stop sign with a stretch of a half mile without any stop signs versus the stop sign going what uh east because they're only going one block during the school and i would assume they're they're going slow already especially with cars parked on that side so i would assume that the issue no i didn't see why shaking but, said but no. I mean, well that's his opinion but i would agree in general with you there because you're already at that stop sign and it is a little slower there but right. it's not it's definitely I'm, not safe there right i'm now. just trying to understand it because uh mm -hmm. the the other part of it is yes you put a sign up some people are, uh, you know, immune to seeing signs everywhere. They just ignore them. The other part's enforcement. And if we're going to do this, I hope we, we do that part of it, too. So there's already signage there. The, the hope with the signage is it's flashing. Catch your eyes. Well, you like to think so. I mean, yeah, it, it catches my eye, and I usually slow down when I see yeah, Like I said, that's I like, always slow down. That's a little <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, Mr. President yes. they also commented that people it didn't happen often, but they were trying to go left once they got to the end of the end, end of that street okay. onto Harrison. Oh, so those new and they're only supposed to turn right. Yes. So off, coming out of the alley. Correct. It's not. It's not a one way. It's. I mean, it's not. It's posted, but people were still trying to sneak out okay. when it when it got crowded. Is what we were. Told. All right. Uh, any other questions or discussion? I just wanted to make sure I understood. Like I said, I wasn't on the committee. I read the notes stuff. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? There are seven ayes. Thank you. Um, there are no further action items and meeting notes are included in the packet. Our next meeting is uh, scheduled for April 28th at 9 a.m. A Zoom meeting. I'll report progress. Thank you, General Administration Committees. Myself, we have the fields at Indian Creek requesting a letter of credit reduction for phases four and five. Uh, under your tab, there's a six-page um, report on on their uh, all their numbers and what they spent so far, I guess. And they're asking for a credit reduction, which is something that we typically do. Um, yeah, it's it's always analyzed by the uh, by the engineer. Uh, he has to do the authorization uh, to sign off on it. He's done. So, would somebody like to make a motion to grant the credit reduction? Councilman Ander, second by Councilman Dufresne. Any questions on it? All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? There are seven ayes. Uh, progress. Or no, our next meeting is this Thursday at 1 p.m. Normally we're at uh, 9. 
but we're just for this one meeting, we're meeting at one o'clock. So progress. Budget and Finance Committee Chairman Dufresne. Thank you, Mr. President. We have one item for action here. It is uh, resolution 2022-17, uh, resolved by Borough Council to authorize the payment of the April 4th, 2022 bill list as follows. Bill list $320,297.16. Apparel number six, $170,755.62. Payroll taxes, $56,055.58 for a total of $547,108.36. Done was 4th of April, 2022. And I put that in the form of a motion. There's a motion by Councilman Dufresne, seconded by Councilman Hart. Any questions on the bill list? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? There are seven eyes. Significant revenue and expenses are in the iPad there, and our next meeting is Thursday, uh, April 7th at 11 a.m. on Zoom in progress. Thank you. Community Relations Planning and Development Committee, Chairwoman McMahon. Thank you, Mr. President. Nothing for official action this evening. Our next meeting will be Monday, April 11th at 4.30 via Zoom. Report progress. Thank you. Uh, there's one set of meeting notes, and that's the Recre Recreation and Entertainment Commission. I want to read and get updates on them. Personal Appeals Part 2. Does anybody have a, an appeal for Personal Appeals Part 2? Uh, we'll unmute our virtual guests. If anyone has a appeal, just state your name and what your appeal is. All right, hearing none. That moves us to the borough manager's report. Uh, I just have, uh, well, I have a couple things. Uh, first of all, uh, we've hired um, Madison Buchanan as a part-time EMT. Uh, Madison uh, comes to us. Uh, she full-time position. Uh, and she works at Mukunji Ambulance as a full-time EMT uh, and will be uh, giving us some hours as well uh, to fill a much needed opening. I also want to uh, make the announcement that Matt Kessler uh, has resigned or is in the process of resigning uh, as a firefighter, a uh, longtime firefighter in the department. Um, it's come to the point uh, he's put in a couple decades uh, for the department and feels that it's time to hang it up as he's not been able to dedicate the time um, that he once was able to. Uh, so, uh, and many thanks to Matt, it's been a valuable asset to, to the department. The uh, last thing I want to share with you is uh, we had our bi weekly construction meeting today. Um, obviously, uh, you know, everything is on the move. Um, the uh, asbestos removal team was in Central Station today uh, to get started on there. Uh, the town hall, you'll see dumpsters filled with, with stuff. Uh, as the uh, uh, skeptic has started uh, their demolition piece in that building. We are uh, about a month behind because of the delay in the move uh, to the trailers. So, uh, you know, we're, but we're moving along. Uh, a little bit of a hold up on a couple things, uh, but it seems like they're doing a pretty good job of working around the materials. Uh, and that's an everyday conversation of you know how to work around uh, this type of material that, that has a long lead time so um, so we're doing every other week meetings for this and then i think it's twice a week meetings for materials and and other pieces so uh, i will say that i feel that our construction management team Dewey, is doing a very good job and they're on top of things for us uh, if you have any questions feel free to ask otherwise i will report the progress Thank you. Under President's business, I'm going to have, call an executive session for personnel and contract updates. No, no actions to be taken afterwards. So at this time, we'll recess at 7.31. And if anyone from the press has any questions, we can do that now. I don't see anyone in the audience. If there's anyone virtually, I can't read the name, so I don't know. You can go ahead and hit pause, Sarah. 
<laughs> All right, we're reconvening at 8.02 from executive session. There's no action to be taken. Is there a motion to adjourn? Councilman Hart, seconded by Councilwoman Bob Gardner. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? There are seven ayes. Meeting adjourned at 8.02.